What's up, guys? KJ for YZI. I've had a few beers tonight. It's Friday night. I'm pretty stressed out. I got a lot of things on my mind. I got a lot of problems. I figure, whatever, I'll just get my mind off it, and we're going to tear apart this 450 real quick. I just want to see, you know, this thing did me all right for years and failed me as I put it on a 10-meter beacon. Uh, it won't transmit. So I want to see what's inside. Do you want to see what's inside? Would you like to see what's inside my 450? We're going to pretend I know what the hell I'm doing here, and we're just going to tear off the cover and take a couple things apart and see if maybe I can see in here what's going on. Okay, lo and behold, let's check this out. My good gosh almighty. Maybe that's my problem, huh? Let's zoom in on that. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Anyways, you know, with the case design, so you have a fan right here. You see this fan? This is, you know, vents the case. It goes in. It goes like this, so it sucks the air into the vents on the top. It goes through, you know, out the back. So... Let me show you what I know just by looking at this. So here's your PA section. You know why I know that? Because it says it right there. <laughs> PA unit. Anyways, so here's your finals here, okay? And it looks as if there's a thermistor that's on top with some uh, thermal compounds so that when the, when the uh, finals get hot for overheat protection or whatever. So what you have here is your transmit in. Then you have your two drivers here. These are the drivers, so it's probably like, I don't know, 100 milliwatts into the drivers, then five watts from the drivers into the finals and 100 watts out. Then you have your output transformer, your input transformer, whatever. Um, and over here on this side, this this is your, your low pass filter, your band pass filters. This is what switches in with these relays, different toroids here and inductors for different uh, filtering on different bands. So when you're on 10 meters, you know, it'll it'll switch in the appropriate whatever. That's that. Now, what I'm seeing here is there's a lot of gook, you know, there's a lot of garbage right there. I, I have, I don't know if that, I mean, I'm guessing that right there is a problem. I mean, if you look at this right here, I shouldn't be touching, well, I shouldn't be using a metal screwdriver either. Here, let's take this antenna for my FT2DR. Right there. See, so this right here, this I could. What's up, Don? Don's gonna come in here to help me. Hello, Don. Hi. We're making a video tonight. And we're gonna tear apart my radio here. Don is, uh, yeah. So, I'm guessing this right here. I, I might, you know, these are little surface mount resistors. And these here, you know, it only takes a little bit of stuff here to short that out. Maybe all the years of the fan sucking stuff into here with no filtration did that. Um, I also have some, some garbage here right around the, the toroids there, but we're going to go further. I'm going to take the bottom of the case off and see just what's in the bottom. I'm just curious. All right. So here's the bottom. Um, and what I know by looking at this is this is your antenna tuner. So this, you know, ATU 450, this was an option in this radio. The 450 D comes with the tuner built in. But in this day, this 450 came with the option, did you want the antenna tuner or not? So that's the antenna tuner right here. And you can see there's a bunch of garbage right here. I don't know what's inside that tuner. You know what? We're opening it up, hell. All right, so I took the cover off the tuner. What I've noticed is there's a bunch of, you know, that's the air intake there or however they, see the fan is here. So they're also pulling air through the tuner, which this is your air intake here. You can see that's a bunch of crap. So here's your other relays here. And again, this, so you have capacitors, uh, the relays, and inductance over here. So, and that's just, you know what? I'm a Yesu Tech uh, wannabe. So these are, based on the L marking here, uh, you know, L for inductance, I'm guessing this is your inductance. So what it does is it switches in the appropriate capacitance Resi uh, relays, you know, it switches in almost like an MFJ auto tuner with the appropriate resi uh, inductance here to make the appropriate tune on your radio. This looks pretty clean inside, but I need to clean all that stuff out. So I have no idea what this board is. This might be where I'm going to guess the IF is in here, you know. Um, 
the IF might be under here, and this might be for your frequency. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. If you know, comment. But this says uh, transmit out, receive in. So this might be your IF amp. I, I don't know. Maybe this is the main process. Maybe it's the CPU. Maybe. But, you know, whatever. I'll leave it to you. So uh, I'm not going to take this board out. I'm not going to take the tuner out. But I am going to clean this. And I'm going to... Boom. I'm going to clean all this because I'm just curious on what's that going to do. Is that going to fix my problem? Who knows? I recommend using rubbing alcohol and then, you know, brushing it and then a compressed air. The, the uh, rubbing alcohol will dry out. So if you use water, no good. If you use, uh, I do have some mass airflow sensor cleaner that would really work on that. As long as it's completely dry, I can clean it with anything. Just as long as there's nothing left over when I turn it on. So the mass airflow sensor or uh, cleaner or alcohol will clean this. I could dry it out. We may have a shot at getting this working. Who knows? Um, but uh, that's that. So let's give it a shot. And what I'm choosing to use today is mass airflow sensor cleaner. Why am I going to use this? Because mass airflow sensor cleaner is $10 a can, and it's for very sensitive mass airflow sensors in your vehicle. So you never want to touch the little thing on your mass airflow sensor because it's that delicate, but they make spray. CRC is a good brand. They make spray for that. So I'm hoping this, this doesn't trash my radio, even though it doesn't work. And it says, proven to gain 4 to 10 horsepower at the wheels, which means I will have 110 watts <laughs> out of my radio. I don't know. Let's give it a shot. All right, so I didn't show you what I did, but I'll show you how it came out, and we're going to see what this means. You know, you can see, evidently, that's a lot cleaner than what it was. Um, over here on the bandpass filters, that was all gooked up. I took some alcohol. Well, I took the mass airflow sensor cleaner, uh, sprayed the crap out of it, and then I took a... Uh, Q-tip with some alcohol and scrubbed and did all that so we're gonna hope that does something whether it does it I mean it's been drying for about an hour I don't know if it's gonna do anything but we're gonna find out who what's what the heck you know uh, the worst case scenario the thing doesn't turn on best case scenario it works but I'm guessing that that right there was a big problem that was covered in crap all right, so I got it plugged in the power and antenna, and all I'm going to do, I got the power supply turned on. I'm going to push the power button, and this will tell me first if it's going to turn on, at least, and not be ruined. Here we go. Okay, so it turned on. Uh, the speaker's not plugged in, so I didn't hear the beep, but... Uh, Okay, so how would I test this? Well, it didn't tune before. It should tune. So I'm just going to hit the tune button and see what happens. And someone wants to call. Okay, so no tune. Let's see. Let's go down to 20 meters. not doing anything now if I plug in let's see ugh, plug in the antenna here or the uh, microphone again I've had a long day okay so what would happen is this right here when I push the PTT see there's nothing nothing happening right and it wouldn't tune Right. Uh, do I have receive? <clears throat> um, well, I don't have a speaker connected, so just for the sake of it, we'll go to we'll go to FT8 frequency. Oh yeah, see it's receiving. That's FT8 right there without a speaker connected. See, it's got a signal, but it's not transmitting. Uh, let's see. Nothing. Now the fan goes into high speed as if it was transmitting. But nothing is happening. 
Yep, that's it. So then I thought, well, maybe it's the tuner. Maybe I could bypass the tuner. So I go in the menu. And I go in the tuner. And internal. We're going to switch it to external. I'm going to turn it off. So then I hit the transmit. Nothing. Hello. Nothing. So here's my conclusion. So I have it hooked up with my watt meter here to the dummy load, right? And in my day of radio, without being a technical geek like some of you guys out there, I know that sometimes when you burn out finals, right, you're still having the driver output signal, so you'll see like, you know, 100 milliwatts, 500 milliwatts, whatever. What I've noticed is, when I go into transmit, right, look at this, there's nothing. Nothing at all. And what I hear clicking is this relay right back here. You hear that? I wonder if that relay's contacts in there are bad and it's not even going into transmit. Um, because I could go and test the bias voltage over here at the, you know, with the finals and stuff, but I mean, I don't think any, I don't even think it's going into transmit. There's nothing here. I've burned out plenty of finals and amplifiers and CVs and had some sort of milliwatts of power coming out. So I'm going to guess. Here's my next video. <clears throat> I'm going to take this board out and I'm going to somehow take this out and I'm going to take all these resistors out or uh, relays out. One, two, three, probably four, five. They're cheap enough. And I'm going to put all five relays in there or test them with a no meter or whatever. And I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to guess that when you hear it, listen to the click. I'm going to guess one of those relays contacts are bad. And also there's a mode in here when you turn this off. You hold band down and band up and hit power. And it's supposed to go into relay cleaning mode. And what that does is cycles all the relays, you know, and it makes the contacts clean, but that's not even happening. That's a microprocessor issue. Regardless of the fact, I'm going to take this board out, and I'm going to replace these in the next video, five, and I'm going to see what happens. So until next time, that's my 450 and what's inside. And I'll replace those relays at the next available chance. I have to find those parts online. Um, uh, you know, a way to just get off my mind for a minute. I don't care what you see in this video or how my desk looks. My desk is a mess, but whatever, man. Uh, you know, I, I am going to fix this radio or at least try to, but I got a lot of stuff going on. So, uh, I hope at least you enjoyed what's inside my FT450. Uh, don't, I'm not telling you anything about using any kind of solvents or cleaners. But it was worth a shot to clean that out. So I'll try it out. And next, now that I know it's clean, I'll go for the relays. 73KJ4YZI.